I'm Peter Brown from Tiny and Sons Glass. Tiny and Sons Glass was established in 1978 when my father and brother and I were at 575 Washington Street in Pembroke. We're certified and qualified to do all your windshield replacement and repair. Tiny and Sons Glass is a community-based business. We have 12 mobile vans that come to you. If the weather's bad, you can come here to the shop. We have a nice waiting area, TV, Wi-Fi, kid-friendly, pet-friendly. We also can move about 15, 20 cars a day through the shop. Perfect for you when the weather's bad. So come on down to Tiny and Sons Glass if you need your windshield replaced or repaired. Tiny and Sons Glass, 1-888-64-TINYS. Just call. Thank you. I'm Arthur Boyle of Performance Appraisal Services. We're residential real estate appraisers with a company founded in 1994 by Mike Gianelli and I in the basement of my house in Malden. We've since grown to have offices in Malden and Pembroke. We serve the Eastern Mass counties, including Cape Cod. A good client for us is an attorney or a private landowner or a private property owner who's going through a probate process or a divorce division of property. Call us at 781-293-6900. Ask for Arthur Boyle or Amanda Boyle Grazioso. Our first name is Performance. Good evening and welcome to the Monday, January 30th meeting of the Board of Selectmen. We will begin with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please note that this meeting is being made available to the public through a live video and audio broadcast on Comcast Government Access Channel 15 and is being recorded for broadcast at future dates. Comments made in open session will be recorded. Uh, first item on our agenda tonight is uh, to consider uh, reducing the number of members of the Town Government Study Committee. Dan, can I ask you to explain that for us? Right. The Town Government Study Committee has been in effect for nearly two years, and we've been having trouble getting uh, the quorum together. Uh, there are a core of uh, three folks that are left over, and we'd like to reduce the, the number of members to five so that those three could be a quorum. And of course, we always put a call out for uh, citizens who want to get involved and join. So there are still two seats remaining that are open. So hopefully we can get some interest. And it's, it's an important committee uh, for the future of Pembroke uh, to, to lay the groundwork, do the research, to bring it to the Board of Selectmen and eventually the town meeting for any governmental change. So if uh, you'd accept the motion, uh, I make a motion to reduce the Town Government Study Committee to five members. We have a motion. The second by Arthur. Uh, any questions for Dan? Uh, it's self-explanatory, and it's a committee we want to support and get them working on the important work that they've undertaken. Uh, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, that's unanimous. Uh, next item on our agenda for tonight is a request from the curriculum coordinator for world languages at Pembroke High School, Christine Noguer. She's a Spanish teacher, and together with teacher Sarah Gregg, they will be taking a group of Pembroke students to Spain for the second year in a row for a cultural exchange. Uh, the students uh, from Spain, the past two years, have come to Pembroke and have done the same thing, staying with Pembroke families. So uh, when they go to Spain again, uh, February 17th through the 25th, the mayor of Alcazar will be giving them a reception to celebrate the link that 
they have forged between the two cities and schools. So what she's asking us to do is if we will uh, accept uh, making a an agreement, well, I guess it won't be an agreement, it'll just be a, a decision on this board that um, we will have a sister city relationship between Pembroke, Massachusetts, and Alcazar, a sister city in Spain. So uh, I have uh, no questions from the board. This is something that we've done several years ago uh, with the town, uh, city of uh, Wales. So it's not the first time that that this has come before the board. That was a while ago. Mr. Chairman, is that, um, aren't they visiting there very soon? Uh, we are going there this time. I don't know if they'll be coming here later in the year or not. That yeah. 22 students is what is right. what they have. Yeah. So it's a great program. And uh, Christine Naga, the uh, Spanish teacher at Pembroke High, has done a lot of work on this with great results. So if there's uh, any other questions from the board, I'd like to have a, a motion that we uh, ask, well, we're asking Pembroke to make Alcazar a sister city. So moved, Mr. Chairman. Second. Uh, moved by Bill, seconded by Arthur. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, hearing none, that's unanimous. Thank you. Uh, next item for us is a request from Camp Pembroke Alumni Road Race, mm -hmm. May 21st, from 8 a.m. to 11 a.m. Uh, it's a request from Ellen Felcher, who was the director of Camp Pembroke. Uh, they ask us for this every year. Uh, the route will start at Town Green, down Center Street to High Street to Mountain Avenue, uh, back to Center Street and ends at the Town Green. It's Sunday, the 21st of May, 8 a.m. to 11 a.m. Uh, they've talked to Chief Wall and they have preliminary approval. Mr. Sir. Chairman, I'd make a motion to grant that um, uh, road race for the day on Center Street um, to go down High Mountain Avenue and back into the center, um, uh, pending the approval of the Chief of Police. A motion by Bill, is there a second? Second. Second by Arthur. Any questions? They've been, um, Camp Pembroke has been very good to us uh, every year, um, you know, by putting money into a, an account for the town to use uh, in lieu of taxes. So um, this, this is a um, definitely a good uh, cause. So I think uh, we should grant it. I would agree. Uh, a motion and a second. All those in favor of the request, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none. I rule that unanimous. Does the board have any old business that they would like to bring up at this time? Hearing none, we'll move on to the town administrator's report. Now, Mr. Chairman, a couple of items on uh, projects that we've got going on. Um, I've been uh, conversing with the uh, town manager in Duxbury about the truck exclusion project for Valley and Burke Street and uh, the chairman, we had the chairman draft a, a letter uh, and sign a letter on Friday to be sent to the Duxbury Board of Selectmen um, urging them to uh, put us on the agenda in the immediate future so that we can uh, meet with them and get their blessing on an application. That'll be submitted to uh, Mass DOT regarding uh, that project. Uh, also, um, February 6th, you were um, scheduled to have a 6.30 meeting uh, so that you'd be able to attend a 7 o'clock public hearing by the planning board regarding uh, a uh, bylaw change to the Center Protection District zone. And uh, there was a problem with uh, the advertisement, and town council had recommended <coughs> a, a new advertisement go in. So, Sabrina, that tentatively scheduled for February 23rd? 27th. 27th. 
So that will be the public hearing that the planning board would, would hold. It's a mandatory public hearing on that rezoning issue for the Center Protection District. Uh, this Friday at 10 o'clock, I'll be meeting with the department heads to give them a uh, preliminary view of the FY18 budget uh, that I'll be presenting to the Board of Selectmen next Monday night and to advisory as well. Uh, it appears that it'll probably be in the range of around uh, $66 million. Uh, uh, right now, um, you know, we're looking at the various requests from the, the departments and how it will fit into the available revenues. Um, basically, what the governor announced in his House 1 uh, proposal was an increase in Chapter 70 money and a small increase in uh, local aid to municipalities, which is the form of lottery money. So, but uh, I'll have uh, a presentation for the board uh, next Monday night regarding FY18's budget. Very good, Ed. Uh, does uh, the board have any issues under Ask the Selectman? Uh, hearing none, we'll move on to uh, any issues under new business. Hearing none, I will go on to upcoming issues that uh, we'll have before the Board of Selectmen. On February 6th, there'll be a discussion uh, and a review of the minutes and agenda posting to the town website and the results of a related survey. Also on the 6th, Kathleen McCarthy, the treasurer, well, will appear before the board to talk about an award for a sale of bonds. Also on February 6th, uh, the 99 restaurant will be before us, and they're going to have a change in their manager. On February 13th, Jennifer Mathias of Hill Boggs uh, a property that she owns will give the board an update on that project. February 13th, there'll be a poll hearing on Elm Street with uh, National Grid and Verizon. So does anybody have any other issues they'd like to bring up at this time? Well, we have a public hearing scheduled at 7 o'clock. And uh, we won't be starting that until 7. So um, we would, uh, we could have a uh, short break. And if uh, there's no other business to come before this board. So uh, I'll we'll declare. We recess until 7 p.m. Thank you, Arthur. Second. Second by, uh, motion by Arthur, second by Dan. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none. Uh, we'll have a temporary adjournment until 7 p.m. when we will begin the public hearing, and uh, we will have Mr. Murphy here. I'm Peter Brown from Tiny and Sons Glass. Tiny and Sons Glass was established in 1978 when my father and brother and I were at 575 Washington Street in Pembroke. We're certified and qualified to do all your windshield replacement and repair. Tiny and Sons Glass is a community-based business. We have 12 mobile vans that come to you. If the weather's bad, you can come here to the shop. We have a nice waiting area, TV, Wi-Fi, kid-friendly, pet-friendly. We also can move about 15, 20 cars a day through the shop. Perfect for you when the weather's bad. So come on down to Tiny and Sons Glass if you need your windshield replaced or repaired. Tiny and Sons Glass, 1-888-64-TINYS. Just call. Thank you. 7 o'clock, so I'd like to start this public hearing. Uh, I'd like to apologize for the lack of chairs for all of you who took the time to come here tonight. So we'll get going with this public hearing. Uh, this advertised public hearing is regarding River Marsh LLC's application for project eligibility site approval to mass housing under the state's comprehensive permit statute Mass General Laws Chapter 40B and Brian Murphy of River Marsh LLC has submitted a proposal to build a development consisting of 14 buildings containing 68 townhouse condominiums located on a 49.94 acre parcel of land located at 274 Water Street. 
A copy of the petition and the plan have been available in the Selectman's office and are here this evening. Uh, the purpose of the hearing, one of them, is to allow the town to submit to mass housing uh, any responses uh, from the public and from different departments within the town, like conservation, the Board of Health, the Police Department, etc. So uh, we have a timetable to respond to Mass Health, and the Board of Selectmen will do that, and we will meet the deadlines. Uh, when Mr. Murphy is through with his presentation, I'd like the opportunity to have the Board of Selectmen ask him any questions, and then at the conclusion of our questions, uh, we will open up to the public, to you that are here tonight, the uh, time to uh, ask any questions that are on your mind about this project. And uh, when we get into that part of the hearing, anyone who would like to ask Mr. Murphy a question or the, bo uh, the Board of Selectmen, if you'd please come up over here to my right. We have a podium with a microphone so everyone can hear you. And we'd like you to give us your name and your address so that we can record properly the people that speak tonight. So uh, without uh, any further ado, I'll turn this over to Mr. Murphy. Thank you. Um, my name is Brian Murphy. Uh, I represent River Marsh LLC, the applicant um, for the River Marsh project. Um, I'm here with Warren Baker, who is our consult my consultant and also attorney. Uh, and uh, what I hope to present to the board is just kind of an informal, um, some, some information that we have as far as the submittal um, and uh, be able to really kind of quickly get to people asking questions um, after that. Um, the, the stage that we're in right now is we have submitted our application to the state. Uh, the state reviews it, takes comments, this is all part of the process, is that we uh, comments are sent from uh, residents and from the boards and committees of the town to the state, and the state then uh, weighs in on all of that and issues, or doesn't issue, an eligibility letter for the project. Um, so we haven't even really gotten off uh, square one yet beyond putting in the application to the state. Um, so as far as the project is concerned. Uh, the parcel is off of Water Street. Uh, here, this is the existing condition, so thank you whoever put this up. I brought it myself, but uh, this is great. Um, this is Water Street here. Um, here you have Church Street, 139. Um, you have Lowe's up here. You have uh, Stop and Shop up here, and obviously Route 3 up in this direction as well. Um, uh, North River is, is over in this section here. Um, there is a uh, house here that is owned um, by the applicant. Um, and there is an easement here coming off of, of Water Street. Both, as you'll see in the, um, uh, in the proposed project, are being used for, for access. Um, the site does have a, water, a lot of wetlands based off of uh, some uh, flagging that was done about 10, 12 years ago or so. Um, but there is, on a almost 50 acre parcel, there is still a lot of uplands uh, that we uh, obviously are looking to develop. Um, so as far as the existing wetlands, just so everybody knows, because I know this is a question on the site walkthrough, uh, that you will need to have a wetland scientist go through and re-flag to see where, if any, uh, wetlands have approved. Um, it's at that point that the town has somebody go out and verify that, uh, that flag, and we all come to agreement what the wetland line is between the, between the town and us, the applicant. And then that is set um, flagging for that site. So again, this is preliminary uh, old, and, and older flagging. Uh, traditionally, they don't move all that much, but you never know. Um, so 
based off of what we know, and I'm presuming must be based off of what we know, um, we have filed an application for 68 pound per units. This is 40 units, 25 percent of them uh, will be affordable, um, and that is uh, folks who are generally more than 75 percent of the median income, 80 percent of the median income. Um, and uh, in Norwell, for example, we're doing a, a project, and that's about uh, units for about $180,000. Um, that'll change based off of you know the town, um, but that's roughly what a unit, an affordable unit, will go for. Um, as we, as you come in, you'll see that there are uh, mostly four or five unit buildings, some three uh, uh, sprinkled in here. Um, there is, as I mentioned before, access there, here and here on Water Street. Um, there is a wastewater treatment plant. Um, a wastewater treatment plant is something that is uh, permitted through the state, uh, and it handles a large gallonage of, of, uh, of wastewater. Um, and it is monitored uh, by a contracted um, and licensed uh, company that will come out on almost a daily basis and uh, and monitor the site and put in whatever bugs or whatever they need to balance it out if needs so. Um, what else? So oh, we are proposing a walking path out to an upland area that's up here. Um, there's really no real development beyond. We're hoping to to, to have a. Uh, Boardwalk of some sort to get over to it. Um, it's going to add to the attractiveness of the project. Um, this area here, uh, there's a lot of questions on the site walk. That's uh, where a lot of the, um, retain, uh, the retaining area for the, for, the, for the runoff will go. Um, <coughs> again, very preliminary. We uh, still have to go back out and look at uh, soils and, and things of that nature. Um, and that's all part of the process. Um, <coughs> there is a crossing here, um, all things that we'll have to go through, uh, conservation and uh, <coughs> potentially uh, uh, mass DEP to, to uh, get permitted. Warren, anything you want to bring up at all? Not yet. Okay. <laughs> um, so that is the project. That's the proposal. Um, and I guess I would just say we could open it up to questions for the selectmen, and they can uh, they can ask and go from there. Good. Thank you, Mr. Murphy. Uh, Dan, did you want to have any question you'd like to ask? A, a basic opening question. If you could just uh, explain to the board and, and to the residents uh, why. A, a dense Chapter 40B project fits in this site, in your opinion? Um, as far as density goes, <coughs> it, it may look dense from a uh, from on, on a piece of paper here, um, but when you look at it from a state average, it really is not um, that dense of a project. Um, there is. 50 acres on that site, um, and we're really only using a fraction of that uh, of that land, um, and there'll be and the, so there is a lot of open space. Um, I, I'm very I'm, I, I just will say I'm unapologetic uh, about density per se because I've done a few of these, and I think they're a generally a, 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 a when they're all said and done, there there's they're a uh, a benefit to a town, and there's something that uh, uh, it's not necessarily, you know, I don't see it as an extremely dense project. I see it as a project that's that's uh, fitting for you know, a 40B type of project. Right, and and that's what I asked for your opinion, so I appreciate that. So, uh, for, the, for the public, uh, Chapter 40B proposals, can be brought in, in, into 
any town in Massachusetts uh, where you have less than 10 percent of affordable housing. And we are, at last count, Ed, about 9.68 percent. <coughs> 965. 965. Well, so, can you, I'm sorry, when was that last count? Was that uh, it was it was about a year ago because we had a chapter 40B come in uh, last year. So that's that's fairly accurate. The dated the HCDs reported November 29, 2016, and it includes projected uh, like new projects that have been approved. It doesn't built. include Copperwood, which is the one down on Birch Street. It does. It does not. And if you included Copperwood, then that would bring, which has nine affordable units down there, that would be, that would put the uh, town's total up to 9.79. So it's the nine units that are counted, not the development as a whole. That's correct. So we have, so to get up to the 670 or so that we have right now, that is, there are, there must be how many, where did all those numbers come from? Right now, we're about 22 units short of 10%. So the Copperwood project on Birch Street has nine affordable units out of a total of 34. And that brings us up to 9.79. Uh, and Mr. Murphy's proposal includes 17 affordable units out of a total of 68, which is 25%, which is all that's required. And that would put the total number of units up to 651, which would put the town uh, three units over 10 percent. So that's just the math right now. And, and Pembroke Woods the, the, is, is requesting to have another 100 units? Yeah, what happened, Pembroke Woods was built, for, was built before the 2010 census. And, the, and the, the base number that the state uses is the, is the census every 10 years. And the town census in 2010 for year-round housing units is 6,477. Mm -hmm. Pembroke Woods put us over that because all of Pembroke Woods counted because it's all rental. But these are homeowner, uh, home owner-occupied, mm -hmm. and therefore the developer is only required to produce 25% of that. Now he could add more if he wanted to, but he's required to have 25%. Mm -hmm. Any other questions from the Board of Selectmen? Yes, uh, Ed, if you could just continue on that on that vein and mention the not the ten percent rule for a forty B, uh, the land mass rule. Right. Just, you know, uh, and I know our uh, chief assessor Kathy Simmons in the audience, and we're working on a report that we would file with with uh, Mass Housing regarding. Uh, the, uh, the rule. Uh, Kathy might just want to explain that very briefly. Sure. You want to go up there again? Sure, again. please. <coughs> Hi, so the, um, there are two measures to meet the 40B requirement. The one that is most known is 10% of the housing stock. Um, <coughs> and Ed just spoke to those numbers. There is a lesser known one where if one and a half percent of your land area is covered with affordable um, housing units, you could uh, be considered to have met the threshold. Um, it's, it's a complicated uh, procedure to go through and to calculate that. There are a lot of exceptions and a lot of deductions that we can do, but we're in the process of that. And um, what will happen is once the town is done with that review, um, if we determine that, yes, we believe we have the 1.5 minimum, there is a um, timeline from when the first um, comprehensive permit hearing is held by the Zoning Board of Appeals. Once that happens, if the town wants to submit to the state that we've, we've, we've met this um, requirement, um, the town will submit a copy of the findings to both the applicant and to the state um, within 15 days of that uh, comprehensive permit hearing, which I don't know yet when that would be scheduled. Um, and then from then, the state determines and they look at your work and they say, yes, we agree or no, we don't agree, and you know they make questions <coughs> and parcels. So at this point, we think it's a possibility that we've met this other threshold, but we don't yet have that, um, but we will have it for when we're doing the comprehensive permit hearing. Arthur? 
Yeah, Kathy, and the 1.5 percent, that doesn't include the large bodies of water and the conservation land and uh, land under no, conservation No, so there, you know, there's a kind of a complicated formula, but essentially you say we have X amount of acres in town, and then from that you take out bodies of water, land that has conservation restrictions, land that's owned by uh, either local government or federal government, land that's owned by other towns. Um, there are all these allowable deductions, and you come to a reduced value. And it's that re reduced value that we say, well, what is 1.5% of that reduced value? So many acres. And then we go to our housing stock, our affordable housing stock, um, the DHCD gives us. And we say, do we cover at least 1.5% of this reduced total land area? So we have a realistic shot at this. So we have a reasonable shot, and it's certainly in the town's best interest to make sure if we've met it, that we submit that. And all that that means is that the town then has some ability to <coughs> say, yes, we like a project, or no, we don't. Because the, without meeting one of those thresholds, the 10% or the 1.5%, the town really is very limited in its ability to um, pick and choose what they would want. OK, any other questions from the board? Yeah, I Bill. Yeah. Um, I had a couple of questions there. There's, um, on looking at the uh, uh, protection order from the North River, um, there's lots three, four, five, eight, and nine, and also the roads and the turnabouts and all that that are within that um, jurisdiction. And um, could you explain um, how you're going to get by that with the North River Commission um, by saying that um, that that's going to be allowed because I've been on the board for probably the last three or four years or whatever, and um, they w they won't even let um, they won't even let one of the uh, people put a fireplace, um, you know, a man-made fireplace on the property that's anywhere within within that um, right. that scenic view. So, um, um, yeah, the, the North River Commission um, uh, is a group that we will need to uh, to go in front of. Um, and uh, I've never been in front of them before. I do know that I need to go in front of them. Um, I have read their rules and, and regulations. Um, we are going to uh, have to find out whether um, we are going to be able to, uh, to permit. And this is the line here, if, if, if anybody's, if the line goes through here. Um, so there are about seven units and some infrastructure that's part of that, that line. Um, but yes, I've, I've heard um, that it is a difficult process um, and we will, um, we're going to find out. Um, but as I said, if, if we're, we're here very, very yep. preliminary state, um, but we know that's part of our process. The other, um, the other thing I had a concern about would be any kind of drainage that would go into the river area or marsh mm -hmm. from the project, from um, asphalt or, or uh, cement or, or whatever, the runoff. And you had said that there's a, um, a wastewater treatment plant, but I looked on here. I don't know where it is. It's um, the plant, it's the, 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 the um, facility itself will be in this, this area um, with um, uh, the um, leaching the field uh, probably in this area as well. Um, the historical good soils um, on this on this site have been in that area. So that's where the, the preliminary plan is right now. Would, would um, that be within the 300 foot? No. No, that's that's inside that? It'll be outside of that. Outside <laughs> of that, okay. Um, and as far as uh, storm water, you know, we are going to have to comply with uh, all the stormwater regulations um, and it'd be have to be engineered and there will be a review engineer um, that will be uh, hired by the by the town to um, uh, be able to check uh, what our engineer comes up with as far as um, a retention and detention uh, areas and, and whatnot for, for stormwater uh, um, stormwater runoff. Okay. Um, the other question I had was um, about the traffic congestion in the area, um, and Route 139 being um, so close to your project. Um, 
coming out on a small residential street and um, and a lot of traffic, a lot of accidents in that area there. And I, have, I just have a concern from being a past police officer that I've responded to a number of them, um, bad, uh, bad uh, motor vehicle accidents in that particular area there. So is there anything in your development stages there that you have that a concern about that? that well, uh, what we, as part of the process, you, you, we hire a traffic engineer. Um, and they come out and they review all of the traffic with, on Water Street on 139. Uh, at this intersection, the intersection that will be up um, uh, where the memory care facility is now, we'll, we'll be uh, uh, do, doing a study on, on all of that. Um, and we leave it up to them as far as their calculations um, to see what, uh, what the traffic is and um, what, uh, if any, uh, mitigation needs to be done um, for that. So is that is that something that they would make a recommendation mm -hmm. to you that you would do, or would it be something that the town would have access to that also by saying um, there's something that you need to do in order to put the project in to make it safer for the people? Both. Both. Yeah, okay. potentially. Um, we've had some developments where you know the, the traffic engineer has said, well, you know, this is an intersection that's that's half a mile away. Um, really, it's not going to be very much affected by the existing uh, or the, the incoming developments. But you know, here are some things that the town could do to, to make that better. Um, if it relates directly to the project, you know, there'll be recommendations to us as, as the developer. Um, okay. To, to mitigate. Right. One else. Um. <laughs> Yeah, I have a statement more than a question. Um, given that this is a um, an incredibly environmentally sensitive area in terms of the river, the wetlands. I mean, it's called River Marsh. Uh, it's um, is a habitat for wildlife and plant life, as well as the sensitivity of the groundwater and the character and the history of the neighborhood. If this is granted, it's a change forever. We have been good stewards of the affordable housing law in Pembroke. We've got 9.79 percent or whatever the figure was tonight. So we've stood behind the uh, mass housing and, and done the right thing in many instances. But I think this is the wrong project in the wrong place. I will at the end of the um, public hearing uh, moved that the selectmen support a one-year moratorium on the co construction of multi-unit buildings in the town to give us a chance to get our records straight and uh, do an environmental study on the area because we ran into it several years ago on the property off of Birch Street or Chapel Street, I don't remember which. And uh, there were uh, painted turtles and other wildlife found there that couldn't be replaced and um, the project didn't go. And um, if you remember the, uh, the older couple that were here, um, they were abutters to it and they said that they had no chance of stopping it and they did stop it. So it's not a, um, an impossible task. So I will wait for the comments of the other selectmen and the <coughs> folks in the audience before you close the public hearing. It's like an opportunity to make that motion. So. Any other questions from anybody? I think that's, uh, sorry, Luke, Dan. So I, before we turn it over to the public, I just want to remind the public that uh, this meeting is for the Board of Selectmen to hear comments, uh, to ask, com ask questions to the applicant and hear com comments and questions from uh, the audience, from the residents. Uh, we will compile all those questions. We are taking taking minutes. The meeting is being recorded, so we will take all those questions and we will submit them in writing to Mass Housing. So any questions, comments, or recommendations that this this board has, as well as the comments of the public, uh, will be, will be recorded and, and given to Mass Housing, uh, either in, in support or opposition to the project. Okay. I'd just like to uh, say uh, before we get into questions that uh, the board was represented at the walkthrough that we had, uh, as well as we had the police chief, the fire chief, we had conservation, we had our health agent there, 
So I think the right people who would represent you from the town were there. So uh, we can look at this map, but if you were actually there, it gives you a better picture of what is being proposed. So uh, I think that's a, a plus for all of us. Thank you. Uh, so I'm going to open this up now to questions. And if you'd please come to the podium, state your name and your address, and we're going to have the opportunity for everybody to be heard. We're not going to rush you out of here. Okay? Uh, Jim McCollum. Point of information. I was at the walkthrough. We were not allowed to walk through. We were shown, the health agent and I walked down one of the entranceways to the bottom of the house next door, and that's as far as we got. Nobody else came down there. Nobody got close to walking through this project. Nobody. The other thing we did do was, is go on um, another person's property, um, went all the way down almost to the river. <clears throat> Um, and we could see through the wooded area or whatever, but we weren't on the, the, that property. No, no. Part of that. Yeah, we yeah. did. We did walk all the way down almost to the river. Yes. yes. Hi, uh, Samantha Woods, Executive Director for the North and South Rivers Watershed. I guess I just um, we'll be writing our own comments about this, and um, one of the things that I wanted to uh, bring up was that. You know, I just looked on the Massachusetts geographic information systems for different um, resources that are on the property, one of which is the Priority Habitats for Rare and Endangered Species, which is a state program, um, state law that protects endangered species. So, uh, you know, it's something that we should bring up in our comments that this uh, property has endangered species on it and that the applicant um, we need to go through that process that might actually inform the mass housing of the sensitivity of this particular area a little bit more beyond. And I would urge the selectmen to ask your staff to look at all those different habitats, uh, resources that are available on MassGIS so that you can bring them up and bring them to the um, awareness of the state board. They don't necessarily know <coughs> unless you tell them. And uh, I don't think the applicant has put the resource area on his um, proposal. So those are the kinds of things that you as the selectmen should think about having your staff uh, really look into what the resources are so that you can make a cogent argument for why this is a particularly sensitive area. So I just wanted to kind of highlight that. I know because I've worked in another, not only this river, but in another river where we actually did <coughs> Uh, bring up some resources that were not made known to the housing authority and when those resources were made aware they said no you're right this isn't a right place for it so they have been known to look at those issues but you have to display them for them so I'll do my best but I would really appreciate some help with the conservation commission if you're I'd like to recognize Judy Parks uh, Judy is a former zoning board of appeals chairman and has dealt with Body B projects in the past. Hi, thank you. Um, again, I'm Judy Parks. I was a chair of the zoning board from 1997 uh, through 2007. So I have permitted most of the 40 Bs. I led the board when we did the most of the 40 Bs, had kind of boards, all of those. I also walked this property because this was also a there was a subdivision submitted for the you know, number of variances by by Bill Murphy. Uh, so I've actually walked this parcel. Um, I don't believe. I mean, I don't, I don't, I was asking what is the actual number of acres that is actually upland that you're going to be building on? 18. Pardon? 18. 18. 18. Okay. Um, because the, the, the parcel is very wet um, and it is really, um, you know, again, I, if in terms of looking at a 40B, we've been very sensitive where we put them. We tried to put them in areas that have not had environmental issues, had not had, were not close to large developments on, on small residential streets. So, and, and my, my whole field, my, my life is in affordable housing, but I really feel I cannot support this um, because of the, where it's located and the fact that I would be curious the number of variances this would require where this irregular subdivision um, is opposed to a 40B. Um, because I know at the time there were a number of variances that were required in order to get the subdivision. Um, the other two, I, again, this may be more of a question for the zoning board hearing. But the width of the roadway, I don't know whether that's a subdivision roadway with 68 units, um, which is a fairly large development for a small roadway. So 
Um, I think there are a lot of questions that have to be answered uh, by the applicant in order for this to be supported by the town. I think the town has made a very good effort to reach the, the affordable housing uh, commitment that the, the state has. And I think that we, you know, again, have been trying to be very sensitive to the residents of the, of the, of the, of the town as we've done them. So I think we should continue in that vein. Thank you. I think I cut off a question to the previous lady. Yes. Did you, did you get an opportunity to answer that question? Somebody asked me my name. Oh, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, so thank you. Do I have anyone else? Yeah. Gentleman here. Good evening, <coughs> ladies and gentlemen. Um, I'm Scott Chapman, and I live at 226 Water Street. Uh, if I may use the map here, my property probably has the largest exposure to this project along here. It's a fabulous place to be. And I can tell you firsthand that it is very wet. Uh, I point you out to this area here, which I could not call it. I'm not a biologist to call it a vernal pool, but it is completely and totally dependent upon rainwater. And uh, it is a habitat for waterfowl. It is a habitat for a number of amphibians. Uh, there are predatory birds. There's a population of red-tailed hawk. There are owls. There are, of course, coyotes that we're all familiar with. Um, and there are also small you know, prey mammals that are abundant. I think the biggest concern that I have here is um, this was characterized as not a very dense uh, development. I would take issue with that. Yes. Um, for those of you who wish to get a very good look at this project, you are hereby invited to come onto my property as my guest at any time and walk this area halfway down the driveway, you will see this pool of water that stands there that has a fair, fairly deep extension into the proposed project. I know it because we live there and that's where my kids and I skate in the wintertime. And that's where we, my kids have grown up, so we know the property well. Um, I would say, I would ask Mr. Murphy, um, you have a proposal for a wastewater treatment plant. Uh, if you could point that out to me, I'd really like to see that. Where would that be, sir? And, and could you kind of define that for us? Because I don't know what that means. There, well, there's no, there's, there's no uh, design yet for it. Um, the area is generally in here. Uh, the way a wastewater treatment plant works is that all the wastewater from every one of these units goes to a treatment uh, building, we'll call it, um, that houses the uh, chemicals and the different tanks that actually treat mm -hmm. the water oh, yeah. before it is released mm -hmm. into a um, <laughs> um, and you know the building in past developments we've done is like 20 by 20 by um, and uh, everything is, is else is just underground um, and it's all handled in, in one specific area. <laughs> I'd also like if you would, um, if you could address, you, you see that in general, you see that these kinds of projects are benefits to the communities and to the neighborhoods that you have uh, been able to develop in the past. Could you tell us and, and the group assembled here, I mean, what benefits do you see this neighborhood really reaping from this? Okay. Because I'm directly impacted by this. Again, it's, it's it's my experience, um, and people come at this from different paradigms, so uh, I, you know, I'll tell you what my experience has been. Um, my experience has been that, uh, and this is other towns, I haven't done anything in Pembroke, but other local towns, um, you have people that come to these, uh, these condos, which are attached condos, they're going to be about probably 1,600 to 2,100 square feet. Um, you get a lot of people who are empty nesters, people who, for one reason or another, uh, want to stay in town. Um, they want to, uh, uh, and this is, this is people who are getting the market rate units. Um, they are uh, a benefit to the town because a lot of people, you know, their kids go to the school, you know, they, they, they uh, utilize the ser that service of the town, and then they've got a place, they want to find a place to live. And if they can't find a place to live in your town, they're going to go somewhere else and pay their tax dollars there. Okay? Um, 
those tax dollars that you know they're not they're not using for paying for their school kids. So, anyways, um, it, that's this one benefit that I've seen in other developments that we've had. I have uh, the other the other benefits is obviously the affordable component. Um, there, there's no more joy than than the, the people who you're you're as you're at the clothing table than somebody who's buying one of these affordable uh, units because they you know. They have people that, you know, they maybe grew up in town or they're a school teacher in the area. These are people who, you know, just can't afford to, to live in the area and they, they really um, appreciate the fact that they have a nice place to live. Um, so I think that's the benefit. The services, these are all private roads. There's no, there's no plowing, there's no trash collection associated with this, uh, with the town. So um, in towns, that, towns, I don't say specifically in Norwell, uh, where we've done a, a recent project, um, a much smaller development um, is well over a hundred thousand dollars net revenue positive for the town um, because of the type of person or the type of uh, owner that this attracts. Um, so that's my experience, Thank you. and that's what I uh, that's why. I, so the, I like. the development in Norwood is that your backyard? No? Okay. Just, just check. Um, thank you, members of the board. Uh, I would once again uh, like to invite anyone who would wish to come down and take a look at this property. I would tell you that the wastewater treatment plant is going to be immediate adjacent uh, to my home. So thank you for And I recognize this gentleman here. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. <coughs> Uh, my name is Marty Cornan. I live at 260 Water Street. I immediately abut the um, the property. My property is 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 right here, uh, to the point of congestion. This is about 100 feet from my deck. It's about 50 feet from my pool. It's about 50 feet from the fire pit that my three boys tirelessly put in about two years ago. I will have be surrounded front by two roadways and a condo building. I bought this house in 1997 with my wife. We were 29 years old. We were new to the area. We fell in love with Pembroke. We fell in love with the street. And we were told by the town that this was unbuildable property. The town, the, the property was assessed at $117,000 at that time. My land only was assessed at $62,000. So 49 acres was assessed at not even two times my one acre. Today's value, $260,000 for the land versus my land of $200,000. Mathematically, I come up with a little more than one house should be able to be built on that property based on what the town has assessed it at, based on what the town told me, and based on, on the taxes that, that have been paid. The idea that taxes are, are going to come into the town because he puts in 68 units, I'm certain that you all recognize that this will <coughs> decrease the value of the property along this whole street. Uh, it certainly would make it a town that I wouldn't be comfortable living in anymore knowing that these types of developments go in. You're creating four corner lots out of none in about 700 feet from Route 139. Hairpin turn, this is 40, 40 feet wide here. The easement, I'm not certain which one he refers to. I have a slope easement that runs around here. It's not a buildable easement, it's a slope easement. Um, so the taxes, or the affordability, I would question the $180,000. <laughs> My whole thing comes down to the spirit of the law here. 40B, the builder is supposed to bear the cost. He has a piece of land that has been assessed at, taxed at, and considered unbuildable. He's paid very little taxes on that land over the last 35 years, at least the 20 that I've been there. He bears no cost. The affordability aspect, I think that Pembroke's median income is $105,000. 2014 is some of the data I, I was lower, but I did see $105,000. I can try to get the, the, uh, the, the where I got that information. 80% of $105,000 is $84,000. Using the 30% rule, that gets you $2,100 a month for your home. That's a $300,000 house. That's fine. Whatever, $300,000 house is fine, but again, you go to the spirit of law. The needy aren't really the ones that are being helped. The, the builder isn't really the one that's bearing the cost. It's me, and it's my neighbors. My house will depreciate in value by 
25%, I imagine, overnight. <clears throat> I've struggled to keep my home. I'm not a rich guy. I look good. My hair looks good. <laughs> I've, strugg I've struggled to, to keep my mortgage within the 30-year time period. I do have some equity in my home. Not a ton. I actually owe more today than I did when I bought the house. Fine. Financial mistakes. Right? But I am going to lose $100,000 overnight so some in equity so somebody can put it can buy a $300,000 house. I don't think that's truly needy. He's not bearing the cost. I'm bearing the cost. My neighbor who just moved in that will be we are, we will be circled by two streets, two homes right here. <coughs> this gentleman just bought the house. I don't know. Recently, he's out there working tirelessly. I'm embarrassed to show my face to him in his yard. <laughs> but I have a number of, of uh, you know, so for me, I know everybody's going to talk about the wetlands, about the traffic. I mean, this is, this is 19 feet, so you know. That road is 19 feet. This hairpin turn is a disaster. Getting out going left, coming down uh, 139 and taking a left on there is a disaster. Cars are driving at 45 miles an hour. They aren't expecting people to turn. You stop, they try to go, they try to go around you. It's terrifying. Coming from the other direction, when you take a right onto Cross Street, where we still don't know what the traffic implications are going to be from the new assisted living building, that's terrifying. You have two lanes coming to one right at that turn. The, the, the risk of getting rear-ended there is daily. I don't know. I mean, I don't want to let other people ask questions. Those are some of the <laughs> for me, For me, there is a personal impact. It's going to be that this is massively congested. Again, like I don't, I mean, if you came, you, you're also welcome to come and see where this, this is inside the tree line. This building is inside the tree line. It's not, it's, it is in my backyard. Um, that's it. Okay. Water, and I have the um, 50 foot road going next to my house, making me a corner. So the question is, I just walked that space on Sunday after I heard about this, and there's not 50 feet between my property and the other house. Are you taking the other house down? So where's the 50 feet coming from? Uh, it's on the plan. <laughs> so my house, my property, is not 50 feet. <clears throat> so where's the, where's the driveway right? So my property line is right up to the driveway. Uh, probably not. You have a big grass strip. <coughs> I haven't obviously had it safe, but it's probably got uh, some of that grass strips. So I just put a gas line in. Oh, and went to the, the town, put the gas line in. And went to the gas, and I had to come to the wall of the furnace, and I was going to get to the property. My property line is right up to that driveway. That's what, that's what three different agencies, three different people told me. It's fine, it'll all be staked out, it'll all be engineered, and uh, what we have for our <coughs> records. The other, the other question is, you said you had a twinkle in your eye when you helped some poor person. You said you had a, you said you got a personal enjoyment out of helping somebody get a house that was low income. What kind of enjoyment do you get out of taking all these people's values out of house? I just bought this house. You're gonna have a hundred thousand dollars for both of us. What kind of enjoyment do you get out of that? Again, I think everybody's got a different paradigm as far as what they think is going to happen to their the value of their home. I haven't seen that um, that happen. Um, so uh, it's uh, you and I are going to look at it from a different perspective. And, uh, I Thank can't you. say anything to change your mind about that. Yes, yeah. gentlemen. Yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, my name is uh, Walter Costello, and I'm on Old Landing Road, which is just a little, little bit up from uh, uh, the, where the uh, double road is going in. And uh, uh, Brian, I might make a comment to you about where 
<coughs> if you have it going to the North River Commission, you should do it quickly. I have had a very, fairly extensive experience. Going to the they're tough. Uh, the other, the other comment I want to make is uh, we've covered a lot here, but uh, in terms of the density, uh, I, I just want to put it. We talked about it, but I want to put a little perspective. Uh, your 68 units is 110 percent of the volume of the number of families on Water Street, Cross Street, Old Landing Road, and Packet Landing. So. You're, you're doubling the size of the number of families, the number of cars, and the roads that, you know, these are back roads. They're not meant to handle a lot of traffic. Uh, Chuck, Chuck and I passed each other on Cross Street. I know the guy. <laughs> and we, our, the mirrors on our trucks hit each other. And, uh, and, and Cross Street was in much better condition then than it is today. So it's a, it's a, I don't know if you proclaim, you know, if part of your proposal is that you replace Water Street with a wider road uh, and Cross Street where uh, after the, uh, the care facility gets finished, if they ever do. Uh, the other, another thing uh, we talked about here with the water treatment plant, uh, I, I looked at your, uh, your application, and I don't see, I, I don't know, I don't know what a water treatment plant costs. Address me. You know, each of us here tonight, we, uh, if we had to replace our septic systems, they'd probably be worth like $20,000 a piece. And roughly 70 families at $20,000 a piece is a, close to a million and a half dollars. So I have, I, I guess I would ask you, what, what kind of budget would you have for a water treatment plant for 68 families? Uh, it's well over a million dollars. I didn't, uh, could you tell me where that is on your budget? Uh, it's in the application. Um, I, is it called out as water treatment plant? Uh, I, I think I remember it was, yeah. Okay, I, I didn't see that in your budget. Yeah. Well, um, take a look at it. And that's that application is publicly available. I know that the, uh, the town has had a copy of uh, Oh, the other, the other question I have, again, you're going to increase the, the, uh, the number of families by, you know, you're going to double it. And are you planning on using all of the existing infrastructure, gas, electricity, water, power, or are you planning on, you know, increasing these services? I just can't see how, by doubling the demand, it would not affect us. Yeah, what, what usually happens... Um, excuse me, is, is, excuse me. The meeting's being recorded on video for folks that want to be here but can't make it, so if we could just talk to, into the microphones, it'd be very helpful. There are some elderly folks who would love to be here, but they can't. Sure. Uh, what usually happens as far as services, um, there is engineering done on especially water to see whether there is going to be enough water for the development. Um, and they, uh, what they'll do is they'll look at the, the existing lines, the pressure, um, and obviously the size of the development, and they'll make a determination of whether uh, it can be handled or not. Um, as for gas and um, electric, generally not a problem. If it's there, it's, it's, there's generally capacity. Well, I, I mean, I asked, I, I added a uh, generator, gas-powered generator, and I was told that I had to change my meter to accommodate the uh, extra requirement for that amount of gas. So anyway, that's why I would uh, raise the issue. Um, another question, you had a chart, you have a, a chart showing Sales of uh, uh, condominiums over three hundred thousand dollars in Pembroke mm -hmm. since two thousand thirteen, mm -hmm. and uh, on three bedroom units in four years, uh, eight of these were sold. And your proposal is for forty five. So you're going to are you planning on 
having a five and a half year supply <coughs> of three bedroom condoms? Uh, that's uh, not uncommon. Five year build out for, for uh, that type of development is not uncommon. Now, is, uh, in terms of the length of construction, are you planning to do this over five years, or are you going to try to do it and get out quickly? I, uh, the goal of the developer is always to get uh, in and out as quickly as possible. Time is money, um, but um, uh, it is uh, most likely going to be a three to five year project. Mm -hmm. Uh, the, the, this one is uh, just a curiosity. Uh, in, in the application for a 40D with mass housing, uh, that they strongly recommend that you meet with the the, the uh, selectmen and the boards of the town uh, to ensure that you understand uh, what the concerns of the town may be and. Uh, regarding the uh, proposed development, and you elected to not to do that. And you went directly to mass housing. Can you tell me why you did that? Sure. Um, in my experience, uh, it, it's hard to uh, have not have something submitted and uh, just kind of it's, it's a, it have a nebulous you know uh, application out there. It's what, all I've done is really send an application to Mass Housing. Um, it's an application or information that I would have to have conversations and, and whatnot with everybody, uh, with anyway. So this, it's this is all fairly normal to actually submit the application and then start having these meetings um, because it's it's. Uh, um, it, it, it just makes sense for, for the developer and it also makes sense for people who are you know in, in the town just because it's it's actually real at this point people are showing up they know that um, they have all the information um, and we can have a, um, a detailed discussion well I, you know, I understand part of it but the other part is if there are concerns of the of the town then you could have either incorporated in your plan before you before you came here, right, right, right. Uh, it avoided some of the right. negativity. And, and, well, I don't know if I should actually avoid the negativity. I think I'm a, a realist about that. But um, I, I will say that just because I've submitted the application doesn't mean that, you know, things don't get changed either by me as a developer or by the state. They make suggestions. Um, they may take suggestions from boards. They may take suggestions from uh, from from you all. So it's it's far from what I've submitted is is far from in stone, and so uh, that's all going to it's a, it's a fluid process. And uh, uh, Warren will tell you we'll go go through the the DBA process, and um, things will change o over time, um, and we'll come out with something that uh, may or may not look a, a little bit different. So. Um, you know, it, it's just because I've submitted it doesn't mean that, you know, it's set in stone and, you know, I've, I've said to everybody else, you know, I don't care about your comments. I do. Um, but it makes, it, it, it makes, uh, it's kind of a starting point for us to, to go up. Well, uh, one of you, you've done these 40 Vs before, other locations. Have, have you ever had a 40 V that had uh, these, the uh, uh, entrance and exit onto a small road <coughs> as opposed to a main thoroughfare? Uh, I have. Because, excuse me, because what, what you're doing is you're directing the only people who might use this down here, which is closest to 139, mm -hmm. are the people who are not going to shopping, are not going to Route 3 to go to work, mm -hmm. uh, because they can't make that left turn without putting their life in danger. So. Uh, I'll say 80, 20, 80 percent of the traffic is going to be directed in, uh, up Water Street and down Cross Street. There was uh, no real direct access to 139. Safe access. Uh, so to answer your question, uh, I, I have uh, developments on Main Streets and developments on rural, rural roads. <laughs> 
Okay. Yeah, I'd just like to say that uh, when, uh, when Mr. Murphy submits his application to Mass Housing, that triggers hearings like we're having tonight. And that the Board of Selectmen uh, is notified by Mass uh, folks that this is going on and this is what our responsibilities are to hold these hearings, to document concerns, and to forward those into Boston. So by him submitting his application, it's true, this is the plan that he sees. But, but he's right, that doesn't necessarily mean this is what he's going to end up with. But it, it triggers this process that we're going through. So I'll uh, ask this later. Can I make a correction for uh, the, just, I said a five and a half year supply. Uh, it's actually a 20 year supply <coughs> of, of three bedroom units. Okay, I'll recognize this uh, lady. I'm sorry, this is my wife, but, so I can, I can maybe do that. <laughs> I, just want to make, I just want to make one comment while it's fresh in everybody's mind. The, the school bus that goes down Water Street right now is just informed does not go down Church Street anymore because of the construction, Cross Street, because of the construction vehicles and the, and the, and the, and the um, damage to the road. So three to five years, I don't know where the school bus is going to go. I, I'll make a comment on that. I drove down Cross Street the other day just to just to get a look at the development that's going on there. Yeah. I won't be going down there anytime. Yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, my name is Jane Cornyn. I live at 260 Water Street. I'm Marty's wife. I uh, I just wanted to add in as far as the spirit of the project and the good neighbors that we at Pembroke try to consider our neighborhood. I, <laughs> our neighborhood is pretty awesome. And uh, the home at uh, 274 was a very good friend of mine who had multiple offers. The purchase and sale was done as a single woman, Karen Trapello. And at the closing, it came in as Red Castle. So I feel as if there was a fraud committed in the in the sneak your way in to get this project done because Michelle would have never sold to uh, the developer because she is very good friends with all of us. And I think that should be kept in mind when you think about who you want to do a project with that's honest and, and really concerned exactly. about exactly. Pembroke instead of concerned about the dollars. Thank you. Well, I don't have to ask. It happened. The purchase and sale was done in a different name than the LLC that showed up at the closing. So it was basically a, you know, a bait and switch. And at the last minute, you're closing after, after you know, having, having turned down the other offers. And uh, it, it's just, it's, it's just a very shady, unsettling, unsettling <laughs> practice to somebody that wants to be our neighbor and talks about the good and the joy that he brings to people. It is. Just wanted to add that to it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, I'm Sharon, and uh, Robert is my husband. He just spoke. We live at 268 Water Street. We bought a home in January of 2015. And I'm going to try for my voice not to crack like James did, because it is emotional. And there are emotions at play here, and integrity. And we, we can't help but be emotional. But I think as neighbors, we've shared all of our concerns. I don't want to re be redundant and repeat, because everybody's done, it's, has spoken so far, has done a great job expressing those concerns. I would like to, again, point out that we are 268 Water Street, this house right here, that will be the direct abutter to what is called Road A, the entrance, right in the middle of Water Street, going to this development. Now, when we bought our home two years ago, being the, probably the newest of residents there, <clears throat> we came to the town, we looked at a lot of homes, as you know, when you're buying houses, you're doing a lot of looking with a wonderful real estate agent who's 
with us tonight. Um, and we saw this home, and it, you know, this, those times when you just say, this is it. It was the street, the neighborhood, the house, everything about it. And, and also, I did call the town, and at that time, I was told, oh yeah, you back up to wetlands, and it's a beautiful area, and you know, all that good stuff. And so we made our purchase. And next door to us, to the left of us, is Marty and Jane in their beautiful home. And to the right of us were the Lenahans, uh, Michelle and Brian. They had to leave our neighborhood because of personal family issues, or they probably would not have. So they left, they sold their house in good faith, and we were sad to see them go, they were nice neighbors. Now that very house is between, the, the, the drive or the road to the development is between my house and what was Michelle's house. So I'm now going to be a corner lot. If I had come to this neighborhood, hopefully not, when this development were in place, I would have been looking at a roadway, an entrance, that would run right along the side of my house, out my living room window. I would not have bought this home. It would not have been anything that would have been attractive to me. Because now, instead of having a neighbor's driveway so many feet from my home, I'm going to have a roadway with potentially 68 residents. That's I don't know, another 120 cars, if not more, because who has one car in the family today, driving in and out of this road on a daily basis at different times, all different times. That's what I'm going to be decided. Doesn't make sense to me, hurts me terribly, and I know that, again, that's my personal feelings and my heartfelt sentiments, but I do think I share them. With the neighborhood. Yes, Marty's right. The value of our home, right down. We bear the cost. There's no doubt. The makeup of this lovely, and you can come to my home, any one of you, anytime as well, and tour the whole area. The makeup of this beautiful, what I saw as an old New England country road with a lovely homes, antique homes lovely homes, everybody cares for their homes and takes care of them, and it's a, a nice neighborhood, friendly neighborhood, a wonderful neighborhood for children, young kids, and now double the size of the residents that we already have, triple the size of the traffic on streets that cannot even take the traffic that exists today. It goes on and on, and I know I'm being redundant with what everything was already said. So, you, you, I would hope that all of you sitting here in front of us listens to us, takes us seriously, and how much this is the wrong place for this development. Now, that's not even to mention all of the environmental and conservation issues that you brought up, which are serious and also important to us because we care about Fremble. Wrong place, wrong time, wrong everything. And I personally request that our spokesmen, our leaders, request to deny this at every level and every shape and form. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Um, my name is Christine Perkins Kahn. I'm an attorney. I happen to live, unfortunately for me, at uh, 275 Water Street, right here on the map. We bought our house more, almost 12 years ago in April of 2005, and this map is so outdated that it still reflects the prior owners to us, the Nicolos. Now, if this map is so outdated that it reflects the prior owners 12 years ago, what other things on this map are totally inaccurate? Not to mention the wetlands, the size of the road, the angle of the road, the angle of the intersection, <coughs> 139, which, sir, is not as depicted on this map. Not to mention it doesn't even depict the other roadway at all that will bear at least half or more of the traffic that we all rely upon to get in and out of this tiny neighborhood. Now, you can see on this map that the road is depicted as being approximately 
It says 45 feet wide. No. <laughs> this road is not 45 feet wide. The map is wrong. It is 20 feet wide at the widest point, as one of my very clever neighbors here measured, at the widest point actually happens to be near my mailbox, which is not at this intersection of this gigantic 50 foot road that they proposed directly across from our house with lights shining into our house day and night. <laughs> now, um, as far as this road, this access road is concerned, they are proposing to destroy the character of the neighborhood in order to put in this giant roadway because it is going to take away the existing um, accoutrements to that property, such as the pool, landscaping. Um, there's also a, a basketball court, I think, um, and a, you know, a, um, I don't know, other, other trees, bushes, whatever. Basically, there is no way, as um, the new neighbors indicated, that they could even fit a 50-foot road. I don't know where they got these measurements from, but it's just not possible because um, this house goes over so far that there's, there would be no way to build this road without destroying the house, basically. They would have to take down the house. Um, right now, there's tenants living in the house. Now, um, this man bought this house under false pretenses, as we've already heard, um, and then he has been renting it to tenants. Now, he didn't even rent it at all for the first year, and we were like, what, this is very strange. You know, why is this house empty? Well, now we know why. <laughs> because he didn't buy it for the purpose of renting it. He bought it for the purpose of destroying it. Um, something I want to mention just before I forget, because I may forget, is that uh, I think many of the neighbors here have prepared letters that they would like to give to the Board of Selectmen if we can do that somehow over, okay, she's raising her hand. Uh, we give them to you? Yes. Okay, great, so um, if you have a letter, we'll drop them by you. Um, but in particular to our home, right here, 275, um, my husband and I are fortunate enough to have an eight-year-old son. Yay. <laughs> but he is a child who is hearing impaired. He has special needs in that respect. Um, and I have attached to the letter a copy of his um, most recent exam, which was this year, which uh, clearly demonstrates that he has moderate to severe hearing loss. So if you install a 50-foot giant road directly across from our son, who rides his bike and plays, uh, and there's no sidewalks, of course. It's a narrow, tiny country, winding country road. Um, I think that there's a great risk to him physically uh, from that being there. I don't know if there is any exception for that in the 40B law. I'm not an expert in that. Um, but I would hope that they would at least take that into consideration, that that is not going to change. Our child is never going to get over hearing loss. He's had it since birth, so that's it. Um, we also have um, many other uh, things listed on this long list of objections, but one of them is, of course, and I think it was briefly touched on by some of the other speakers, that the memory care facility is also just gone in at the corner of Cross Street and 139. I know everyone here is familiar with that. We don't even know yet what the traffic burden is actually going to be as a result of that. I mean, traffic studies aside, we don't know what boots on the ground it's going to be like. So for this tiny neighborhood of 65, I believe it was someone said, 65 houses, for all the streets combined to uh, already have the burden of this gigantic memory care facility right in our neighborhood with the traffic that goes along with that. And then this, that's just not acceptable. I just don't think it's fair. This is not the right neighborhood for this kind of a development. Only because, not because you know our houses are big, beautiful, or whatever, but only because of the density and the character of the neighborhood and the narrowness and dangerousness of the whole at in, at egress and access to the, to the place. Um, as far as the um, 
the historical nature of this neighborhood. Our house here <laughs> happens to be partly built in 1700. This house here, I understand, I'm not exactly sure the date, 16 something? Okay. This house here, which 1702. 1702, okay. These are historic homes in a historic neighborhood. I don't know how Mr. Murphy can explain that this type of development would not destroy the character of the neighborhood. Could you explain that? Really? <laughs> there is really nothing to explain in that regard. I mean, it's, it is uh, uh, land that is available for development. And uh, these, these home, those homes are still going to be there. It hasn't been for 35 years. So I, I don't know how the house to explain that. So, as far as um, the other question, I think one of the selectmen here addressed the exact data that we have so far in 40B is concerned. Um, I don't know, but I understood that there were other developments for 40B that were already underway or additional units were being added. Is that not yeah. correct? That's not just the one. one. Yes? Okay. Just the one. Just the one. Okay. Um, so, I would ask you respectfully uh, to take all of these factors into consideration. Everybody's letters, because I know everybody's written them, and I know a lot of people have, you know, and that they've spent a lot of time on it. That this is wrong, or here. Not because it's in my backyard, honestly, but because it's on a wetland in a historic neighborhood that just is not accommodating traffic on the field. Thank you. Thank you. Landing. Um, I did go on the Mass GIS website and um, I'm going to share that information with you. There are two vernal pools. Uh, one is directly in the vicinity of this um, residence, this proposed residence. And for those of you that might not know, a vernal pool is a breeding ground for various species and um, there are a number of endangered species as uh, the one from the um, North South River uh, watershed told us about. So there is a vernal pool on this property and um, the Massachusetts uh, GIS, I would encourage you folks to look at it for your own resource and I will also share it with all of you. Um, and as she directed, that we should probably um, use this information when we appeal to uh, Mass Housing regarding uh, the expansion of this uh, project. So that, that's the big thing right there, our environment. You know, with all due respect to um, the beautiful homes and the historic nature of the town and um, the density of this project, um, we do need to be partnered in partnership with um, the wildlife and the beautiful North River that does impact not only us, but many towns upstream and downstream. And um, the, the beauty of, of what is actually <coughs> left of the North River for people to enjoy. Um, and this project certainly would impede all that and impact that in a really negative way. The other thing that I would like to ask Mr. Murphy is, um, I grew up in Noel, I'd really like to know where um, where your projects are in Noel so I can go and admire um, your good work mm -hmm. and share that information with the rest of the, the folks in my neighborhood. Thank you. Uh, the one project that we have up in Norwell is uh, Washington Woods. Sorry, I'll get to the mic. Uh, one project we have that's, that's up is Washington Woods, um, and that is 40 units of similar type of homes as proposed here. They're bigger. Uh, mm -hmm. than what, what's actually proposed here, but same shingle style homes that, you, that would, you'd see uh, in this development. Um, and we're just finishing that up right now. It's just, uh, if you know where the Fours is on 53, mm -hmm. it's just north of the Fours. Um, and uh, we have another one that uh, is uh, in, uh, in the works, the 40 units, uh, but it's still, um, still in the firming phase, and there's the condos. And another one that's got approvals, we just haven't started building yet, and that's uh, 126 apartments off of Prospect Street in Norwalk. Thank you. 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 Thank you
Why are you still at the microphone? Can you just explain to everybody the, how you did purchase your, your house on Water Street? Yeah. That'd be nice. Uh, it's through perfectly normal means. Just bought it through a, uh, um, an LLC. Who's the woman that bought it? The, the, the contracted the buyer? Do you know her? I don't think that matters. I, don't so know. I think we all want to know. I'm glad you all think so. I, just, I don't think it matters. But why did you choose to conceal who the actual real purchaser was? Why did you choose to do that? Chairman, I really uh, don't think this is relevant to. Yeah, I, I don't think this is relative okay. either. All right. Um, all right. Any yeah. <laughs> anyway, I think that's all I have for right now. Unless anybody on the board mm -hmm. here has a question. Thank you. Now, just to note, at the end of all of this, I'm wondering, there was a proposal put on the table to have a moratorium for a year on affordable housing. Thank you. So we could get the people at home to hear your question. This gentleman proposed a one-year moratorium on affordable housing projects going forward, and I, I didn't hear what the rest of the board said. Can we just have your name and uh, oh, and your address, please? Mason. I own two properties on Packet Landing. Okay. Well, I believe we were going to address that at the end of the hearing. Okay. Yeah, I intend to make the uh, motion. Okay. All right. So we will have something by the end of the meeting. Okay. Thank you. <coughs> yes, sir. Hi, my name is Michael Cormick. I live on 310 Water Street. I have a little bit of a cold, so uh, hopefully you bear with me. I want to go on record to the camera to categorically oppose this project for the sole reason that it is irresponsible. It is environmentally irresponsible. It, it, the, make, the destruction of the aesthetic makeup of the neighborhood is irresponsible. The increased risk to our residents and our children is irresponsible. A project such as this, lacking response, absent responsibility, is greed. And I ask you not to feed the greed. That you step up. Mr. Murphy himself said it. Well, it's a buildable lot. That's why I'm doing it. 40B is the back door to do it. Let's stop it now. I applaud the selectmen who gave a moratorium. I request that we seek alternatives to make sure that that land is forever protected, that that neighborhood is forever protected, that no building, no project such as this catastrophe is ever built in this neighborhood again. That hey, do we have any uh, person that hasn't spoken yet? that would like to come to the podium? Uh, if not, I have a lady that's already <laughs> spoken, know, but already why don't you come down again, ma'am? Sorry, I just wanted to point out that the uh, project that uh, the Washington Woods, was, is that what it is in Norwell? Be, prior to being a 40B, it was a trailer park. Mm -hmm. So it's a totally different thing. Mm -hmm. If it was taking a trailer park, improving the land, and, and, and beautifying the town, that's one thing. This is the direct opposite of what happened in Norwell. So I just wanted to keep that under consideration. Good point. Thank you. Do we have anyone that we haven't heard from? Yes, sir. My name's uh, Matt Hitchens. I live at uh, 337 Water Street. Been there for a little over a year now. I first just wanted, I wanted to thank Marty and Walter. Um, I honestly had no idea that this was even in the works, or that there was a meeting going on tonight. So if they hadn't dropped something in my mailbox for me, I wouldn't have known and, and been here to uh, ease my wife's concerns as well. So I've lived in the property for about a year. Again, this goes back to why I bought the house there. Quiet neighborhood, not a lot of traffic on the street. Uh, I lived on uh, West Down before. Uh, couldn't take the kids out on the street trick-or-treating. I had four-year-old twins. We was able to do that this past year, and I suspect that if this project goes forward, in the next three to five years, that, that won't happen. So that's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else that hasn't had a chance to speak, please come up now. Uh, yes, I, I see you. I have one more comment. I've already spoken. Don't want to take up the time. But I do want to say, how was the walkthrough communicated to, to the residents? Because I knew nothing about the walkthrough. I'm home every day, trust me, I would have jumped out of my pajamas so fast <laughs> and I would have been with you guys. 
And I just, this is a question of communication lines. I remember getting a, uh, getting a notification. I don't know if, if it was, if there were a public notification. It was given to the Board of Selectmen. I think I went, uh, I was, I was a little bit disturbed that we weren't able to walk the property when we were there. Um, but I did notice that, um, you know, that we were denied to walk the property because there were so many people. Um, but I also noticed when I went by uh, the river that it was extremely high tide uh, at that time that we had the meeting. So it probably wouldn't have been beneficial to the property owner um, at the time when we walked it because it would have been flooded. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. We have someone else. Yes, sir. My name is Chris Graham, and uh, we own 271 Water Street, Pembroke. We bought it last October, February. and. Um, yeah, we're wicked cool neighbors, and I, uh, <laughs> we really enjoyed being part of the town. Trying to be active. Um, I understand Mr. Murphy. I think he's pretty cool. Like I like his whole development thing, but uh, not in this particular area, like everybody said. What else would I discuss? Uh, we reiterated, or like everyone's really discussed the traffic concerns. I feel like that's pretty valuable. What else would matter? Oh, I actually live directly across the street from it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't have a highlighter, but I'm sure someone here does, but I'm also sure that 271 Water Street, everyone's probably seen it before, it actually goes all the way down. next to the cemetery. Yeah, I'm right next to the cemetery. It's actually the limousine house. Yes. <laughs> Does it have your name on it though, Chris? <clears throat> no, it has Sean's name on sure, yes. it. I'm not like him. Well, regardless, I am a developer and we do do land development, so I do have a general understanding of what's going on here, maybe a little bit more than other people, have graduated from Wentworth Construction Management, have successfully completed land development as well. So that helps like educate me or bring me up to speed with anybody. I'm like, I still think you're pretty cool. I just don't think there's any guys want to do it. I know everyone's beating up on you. Like, I'm like, MD, like, I like that you own like everything in Pembroke. <laughs> I'm not like, trying to be mean. I think that it's uh, like maybe like across the street at Mucky's and that other piece of land that you have over there might be a better spot. Yeah. I have no idea, but like I do know I don't think it's a good spot. Why don't I? I have a four-year-old kid and uh, like already walking down our street's kind of tough. Mm -hmm. I actually wanted to put like a removable speed bump in front of my street. I didn't know how cool like <laughs> my neighbors would think it was. I figured you guys would hate it. <laughs> but like regardless, I felt like people already went really fast on my street. Yeah. That's like the best way that I can word that. Does that make sense to you guys? Like, I feel like my neighbors right here that I see all the time, I'm like, whoa, slow down. Like trying to walk my kid and dog and stuff. Like can't really do both at the same time safely here. What? Now you're going to triple it? Come on. That's not cool. So if you were going to do that, what you would have to do, or what would only make sense to do, would be to... Yeah, yeah, no, Murphy would have to spend a ton of money and make this whole street big with a sidewalk and like a full real street. It's totally not that type of street right now. What do I think is that like ultimately will happen? I think that he like overshot on this, tried to get this many, he knows that he's going to backtrack or backpedal. I'm pretty sure everybody knows that. Like the coolest thing for me would be like, yeah, go ahead, moratorium, one year, sick, do it. <laughs> what else do I think? I think like he could probably do like eight sub eight houses, do like okay, giant yeah, mansions. Please. Just like do some giant, like three giant mansions, make like the same money, crush it. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't know, like, I'm not cool with this thing happening. I like, think I've created, oh, we're having another kid right now in March 20th. He's coming up. This thing flies. I forgot the point. Pretty big deal. Like bought the house. Totally did a ton of stuff. Like put a few hundred thousand bucks already into it. I'm like gonna leave. Don't care. <laughs> gonna move my family. Might not even stay in the town anymore. Like not gonna be on that street. That's sad. Like for real. Uh, somebody have any questions or concerns? What did I say? Does it all make sense? Great job. Thanks, Chris. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Hi, I'm Carolyn Crosley. My husband, Chuck, and I live right here. We're the immediate abutter the whole way down to the river. I reiterate all the concerns everybody else has said, and um, our unique concern is our property is lower than his property. He's been moving dirt around for the last 10 years, mm -hmm. testing septic and piling it up, and we're probably a good... 12 to 24 inches lower than he is. So anything he funnels into this 
retaining is, is just, we're afraid it's going to flood our land. We, we grow hay here, we grow crops for our animals, we supplement our income with it, and I just think it's going to destroy some of our livelihood. It's, this is too close to our property, and I, I don't believe it's going to contain any of the groundwater or the rainwater that can now no longer go into the soil because it's plastic with cement. Thank you. I just have some questions about the permitting. Um, does he get to bypass permitting or because of the 40B provision? Well, you would have to go before the Zoning Board of Appeals. And that process is all established now because of the 40B designation. Um, we, we, we're going to have the Board of Health and Conservation and other people involved. Um, I'm not exactly sure. Uh, what we can really stick to because we do have rules for all of this but because it's a 40 B there, there's some give and take back and forth but you can't really just tell them this is how it's going to be and that's it now mr. Thorne might have another okay. comment well I think what happens is that after this meeting we will send a letter with all of your all's comments along with the Board of Health and all the other various departments and then we send a letter to Mass Housing supporting it, not supporting it, raising concerns, whatever. Then it's up to Mass Housing to make the determination as to whether or not they're going to go forward with it. And then the, the Zoning Board of Appeals then will have a series of public hearings, required public hearings, in which the developer will present their plan. Uh -huh. And that would allow you folks to attend all these meetings and whether the plan gets modified or not or whatever. So um, this is the very first step that the, uh, the uh, procedure has where the selectman you know, invited the developer to come in and to present his plan and obviously, you know, um, the fact that all you folks are here, you know, allows the board to go ahead and put together the letter, which I will write, um, and it, you know, with the help of uh, our executive assistant to mass housing. So, and it'll include all, all the comments that have been made and all comments made by the department. This is just <coughs> the first step. So if mass housing approves it, does the town have any say in it being yeah approved. then then it now goes to the zoning board of appeals before any kind of permits issue the zoning board of appeals yeah. will hold the series of hearings it could be one it could be 20 regarding the project okay um i could i just have a message for mr murphy i think that you know you're wasting your time i think that there's a lot of opposition to your project <laughs> and I think you're wasting your money, and you should go somewhere else. Yes, sir. Hi, uh, my name is Dan Mahoney. I live in Packet and Landing. Um, I really wasn't going to say anything. Um, I was going to ask you guys some questions. The last gentleman just really touched upon my experience. But before I say that, I, I really want to commend Arthur and I want to commend the abutters. Uh, okay, I built two homes. Uh, I won't be, I'm not really that good of a speaker. Uh, and I'm going to try my best to, to direct my questions to you. Because I'm overwhelmed at the delusional stuff here. I built two homes. One I needed a variance, the zone of appeals. The other one I didn't. Both homes. I needed approval from the immediate abutters. One home, the one that didn't meet the various, that I had to get zone of appeal, I needed signatures from 500 foot radius of the home I built. That's number one. So my heart goes out to these immediate abutters. 
And I don't know where Brian's heart is. I'm sorry, I had to say it. I, I don't get any of this. To me, this is all delusional because he's wasting his lawyer's time. He's wasting everybody's time. If I was him, and that's my question to you guys is, <coughs> you've already answered the first one about the zoning appeal. The second, the first question I did have is, is, is the uh, Conservation Commissioner here? Because shouldn't he have done this all beforehand? That's what I had to do. When I built my house, I had to come in. I was told by my lawyer to come in with all the signatures, the architectural plans exact, not possible, not probable, not 12 years mapped. I had to come in with an exact. I was just a father. I was a newly father. I was a young kid. Okay? I had to have all my T's crossed and my I's dotted before I spoke to the people. And I just want to say that. That's all. All right? Good luck. I hope you rule in in favor of the people because this guy's delusional. <laughs> Anyone else that hasn't spoken like to speak? No Mr. Murphy, thank you for coming tonight. Uh, my name is George Howe. I'm at 285 Water Street. I'm not on the map. It's the story of my life, but I'm actually uh, on this property right here. Um, I have horrible eyesight. It's fine right up to 50 right now. Um, I'm going to be a little bit repetitive, but just for the sake of getting it on record. Um, I'm a nine and a half year resident of Pembroke, proudly residing at 285 Water Street with my wife and two young children. Uh, we bought our house on Water Street in 2007 mainly because of its location, the rustic setting of the neighborhood, its horse farms, as well as its quiet charm. Uh, we probably overpaid a little bit for the house, <coughs> still. but. Uh, <laughs> We're certainly willing to let future value and appreciation positively run its course. So, unfortunately, it appears that course is, has, has ended. So the proposed project raises a lot of concerns. We've all heard them tonight. I agree wholeheartedly with all of them. Um, not as eloquent as my neighbor Paul, but we've already lost our iconic course farm to a large uh, healthcare facility, which in addition to altering the face of our neighborhood, is about to negatively impact the traffic concerns for 65 existing homes and approximately 140 cars. And although we understand the 40 patients of the facility do not drive, their guests and a rotating staff of nurses and or administrators do, we have yet to feel that impact as it's not scheduled for completion until the fall of 2017. I certainly as you've heard, I challenge any one of you to enter or exit our neighborhood, either from the west or the east, on Water Street or Cross Street, uh, at any time of, of day or night, uh, you will find the experience um, hazardous at best. Additionally, the condition of Water Street and Cross Street are and have been in, in, in disrepair since I've lived there. With narrow roads, no street lights, several blind spots, and potholes and cracks that will no doubt challenge the integrity of your, either your tire pressure or your axles. Um, building 68 more units with one or two cars, or 50 units, or 30, or 10, whatever the number may be, will create the potential for further safety issues. Um, I mean, I, I too bought my house with a lot of joy at, at, at closing, Mr. Murphy. And, uh, as glad as I am at you being unapologetic, unapologetic for density questions, um, it just doesn't appear to be the right place uh, for our, our neighborhood. So I respectfully uh, ask the town of Pembroke to uh, deny the, the building permit. Thank you. Anyone else? Yes, sir. So I, I don't have anything prepared, but I would uh, I would just urge everyone who hasn't spoken just to come up here and get on record just saying that you're actually going to object to this. Because I think hearing the numbers and actually hearing it from people will, will go uh, 
uh, extremely far in, in helping uh, push the decision in our favor. So that's all I have. Thank you. My name is Charles McCarthy. I live on, unfortunately, I don't live on Water Street. I live on Center Street. I have a question about this uh, sewage treatment plant that you're proposing. Where's the water going after it's treated? Into the North the River? Yeah. Oh, gray water. Um, there is a soil, soil absor absorption system, which is just a, uh, like everybody else's uh, septic field. Um, it's just much bigger. It goes into the ground. Anyone else uh, that hasn't been heard or that would like to ask a question? Hi, I'm Carol Francis Chapman, 226 Water Street. Right here. So my concern was not only the wetlands here, but the wetlands in our property, which my husband has spoken about. My children were born in this house literally born there and they say they never want to leave and if this happens we're going to leave so just going on the record i hope that this project is fully denied thank you and uh we have, we have one, another gentleman here yes sure Yes, sir. Jim put the challenge out to make sure that we're all recognized. I'm Mike Wagner. I'm here with Tracy, my wife. We live on 13 Old Landing Road. Uh, we also want to register our objection to this project. I'm not going to be redundant to traffic and all of the issues uh, that have been already discussed. I, from my perspective, we do a lot of work. I, live, I work in Boston uh, with the poor, and I find it to be somewhat um, very worrisome that we're putting people who are at the lower end of the economic spectrum in an area that we know is going to be flooded. Um, and I think that, you know, if I look at this from that perspective, it just doesn't look like the right place at the right time. So thank you. Okay, well, if we have no other questions, I be all recognized. Yes, all right, sir. One quick question. Sure. Uh, I'm Marty Cranham at 260. Um, I did. I did mention earlier uh, when I when I uh, addressed the, the, the committee um, about the assessed value of the land. And since that time, we've heard the, the word buildable a number of times. Is that in the buildable for 50 acres of land? Is the, is that assessed as buildable? To, to, uh, Roughly, so my my land is two hundred thousand dollars. Is the current? It's on the website. My land alone is two hundred thousand. This is two hundred. This so this is two hundred. This is two sixty. Is that assessed at a buildable rate? I don't know the answer, but we have Kathy Salmon, our <laughs> assessor here, and if I could ask Kathy to answer your question. It is not assessed as buildable. <clears throat> we have it assessed as unbuildable and as wetland. Um, just for clarification, the assessors um, don't determine the legality of whether or not you can build. But what we do do is we um, take all of the reasonable, available information that we have <coughs> on properties. Um, and if we see DEP wetlands uh, maps saying that this is wet, um, we're going to consider that some of it is wet. Sometimes we get information from taxpayers telling us we've tried to perk it in this way. So there's a variety of ways that we get the information. Also, the um, lot that's in question does not have, um, I think it has a 40-foot frontage um, on the street. And so under current bylaws in Pembroke, you need a minimum of 150 frontage, even for a house lot. 
but that's right, but, but the question was on the assessment. So um, on the assessment on this lot, on its own, which is what we're required to do prior to anybody purchasing and proposing something forward, to the best of the information that we had, um, we believed it to be uh, wet, and we believed it to be unbuildable. And um, in fact, we, you know, any taxpayer always has the right to question their value and appeal to the Board of Assessors, and that value even has been appealed. And they always have the right even to then take it beyond the assessors to say, um, you know, to go to the next court level. And that has happened as well, even as the buildable, the unbuildable and wetlands. So to restate, to the best of our ability, from what we could see, we believed it to be um, some portion wet and some portion unbuildable uh, based on both this location, the DEP wetlands, <coughs> and not having enough frontage under the current bylaw to get in and do anything. Do you have any record of the, of the owner of the land? It just, it, 10 years ago, I remember somebody saying that the owner of the land um, uh, um, would petition to have it assessed as unbuildable. Is that, and consider, I, I, I put a significant amount of money into my property based on this unbuildable assessment. So, I'm not aware of something from 10 years ago, but, but just to be clear, um, you don't petition the assessors to declare that it is something or it is not. You might say to us, you know, we have tried to, for instance, had we said you have about 50 acres of developable land, sometimes an owner will come in and say, here's the information of why it's not buildable, and they'll give us documentation. We've tried to perk it, we've tried to do you know, these different things. Um, and so you can request something of us and give us documentation that maybe we weren't aware of, and that can be considered. But the assessors never determine um, the legality of whether or not you can build. To the best of our ability, we take the data that we have and we look at it under the current bylaws that we have, and, and with those different things, um, <coughs> no frontage, wetland areas, we assessed it as not being able to be developed. Now, obviously, it has changed because there's now another piece involved. Um, and what you're allowed to do under 40B has nothing to do with what you're allowed to do under the Pembroke Zoning Bylaws, and that's key to remember. So if something goes in under 40B, you don't have to meet that 150 frontage, 40,000 square feet per lot. That's why you're allowed to do these developments that would be outside of something that would normally be allowed in the town of so, so you're not, but I'm sorry, I don't, I don't want to repeat the same question and I don't know if you have the answer, but it's just curious to me if over the last 35 years, the owner of this land has ever provided documentation that would state that this land was unbuilt. I do not know if over the last 35 years they have presented. I'd, I'd like to go on record as saying that 10 years ago, I believe it was stated that <coughs> that petition was made by the builder. Well, if I could say, Mr. Chairman, the, the land survey that's part of the application was a survey done on this property in 2002 with the intent of building a subdivision there. So they were looking as far back as 2002 uh, to build a subdivision there. Um, and, but what you're asking Kathy here, uh, our chief assessor, is if the land was unbuildable. Well, the land was unbuildable, wet or not, due to zoning regulations. So they had, they had this property, as large as the lot is, is a single family home because that's what it was zoned for and that's all that you could build there under the Pembroke zoning. They can't assess a property based on uh, the possibility of a 40B which supersedes all or most of Pembroke zoning by law. I believe there was a 40B project that was presented to the state within the last uh, 10 or 15 years. I don't, I don't recall one for this particular I, property, but we can look into it. I think that there yeah. was. Yeah. No, it was a subdivision. It was a subdivision. Okay, thank you very much, Kathy.
Okay. Thank you, Judy. Uh, not having uh, any other questions, uh, Walter. When would we? Uh, when would we know? And what, uh, what would we know about your decision uh, for your reply to Mass Housing? Well, we have a, uh, a firm date on uh, when we have to reply. <coughs> It's uh, February, February, 9th. February 9th. We have to have in the hands uh, in Boston all of the comments from the public, comments from the town boards, any comments at all, for or against. And uh, we will make sure that we live up to that date. Okay, and so, how? How will we find out what your, what that letter says? Mm -hmm. You can get a copy of it as soon as it goes out at the public record. Right? I was going to say. Well, you're going to publish website. it on the website, yeah. uh, yeah. town website? Mm -hmm. sure. It's the best way to do it, I think. Yeah. <coughs> Thank you. Um, before I adjourn the hearing, we've heard from a lot of people. I'm, I'm just going to ask Mr. Murphy if he had, if he'd like to make a closing statement of any kind or. Are you, are you okay with closing the hearing? Oh, I'm sorry. Um, my name is Kara Littlefield. I live at 300 Water Street, which is down here somewhere. Um, there's some of my neighbors. Just wanted me to point out about. Um, I I did talk to the um, police department and asked how many accidents we have had here. And also at the um, town of Cross Street and 139. Um, and in the past three years, we've had 43 accidents wow. in that, in those two intersections. So by more than doubling this, you can expect that we're going to more than double those accidents. I'd also, while I'm up here, since I got up here, I'd like to point out that the corner of Water Street and Cross Street is a treacherous corner too. Um, my daughter's best friend lives in the house on the corner of Cross Street, and those poor girls—they—they they were not allowed to cross the street um, because that corner is so bad. Till they were probably 12 years old. I mean, much to their chagrin, they—they they really, um, it, as a mother. It, it's it's scary there, and um, now the middle schoolers and the high schoolers. That's where where they congregate um, for the bus stop, 6:40 in the morning, in the dark. Um, so the idea that we're going to be increasing the traffic down there by 80 percent is pretty scary. Um, that's all. I would just add that when we had the walkthrough, uh, one of the people there was the chief of police, and uh, he was looking uh, and made comments about some of those issues as well. Thank you. So, Mr. Murphy, I, I recognize you. Can I just if ask you. One quick question. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Larry Peggs at Cross Street, uh, right about here somewhere. Um, quick question I had, I think, might be for Kathy. You had mentioned that um, Pembroke may have attained their goal versus the land area necessary for 40B? When do we get to know if that's the case? Or what's involved in that? Um, there's a timeline that's required. Um, the state requires if you believe you have met your goals either by your 10% <coughs> of your housing or your 1.5% land mass, um, when the first comprehensive permit hearing is held, by the um, ZBA, by the Zoning Board of Appeals. It is at that time that the town would s notify both the applicant and the state to say we believe we've met our required minimum and, um, and here's the documentation to it. So it's at that time, and I don't know when that ZBA permit will be. I don't think we, you know, <coughs> we don't yet know when that will be. Um, but when that happens, um, 15 days, from that hearing, notification will go to the state, to the applicant, 
and the um, state will review it and make a decision on it, and the applicant has an opportunity to say, well, I disagree with um, you know, one or more pieces of the documentation. Gotcha. Thank you. Okay. Can I ask Mr. Murphy one quick question? All right. Let's say it all goes through. When would you start construction? Uh, as soon as possible. I don't know, this, that's what you're answering. Six months, a year? Um, well, I guess it depends on the time of the year, but um, <coughs> we got approvals in a springtime. we be starting with early fall. Okay. Um, so I, should, I guess in closing, I'll just thank the board for, for having uh, us here tonight to uh, um, go over the project. Um, I'll just re remind everybody that this is just a site eligibility application. So the state actually has to come back to us and say that, yes, it is an eligible site for 40 d It's at that point that we actually apply to the town of Pembroke ZBA. So there's a lot to go in this process. Um, we are really in the beginning stages. Um, and we're by no means, you know, adjudicating this this project here tonight. And I, I do appreciate everybody's uh, comments, and um, uh, I'm sure over the course of uh, uh, the next six to nine months, um, uh, there'll be plenty of hearings and plenty of opportunity for people to be heard. Very good. Thank you. Uh, before closing the hearing, let me may I just make a comment on my own. I want to thank everybody that came here tonight. You're very orderly, very quiet. You listened to the instructions and you followed them through. And I think that made this a successful hearing. Everybody had a chance. And uh, Mr. Murphy was very willing to try to answer all of your questions. That's what this process is all about. We're not trying to hide anything. And we're not going to hide anything. So. Uh, just uh, keep in touch. I know you will. I know you're interested. So I'm going to close this public hearing. And uh, I motion before you do it. Uh, yes, I'm sorry, Arthur. Sorry. I, I would move that the Board of Selectmen issue a letter of non-support for the proposed uh, River Marsh Village and that we support a moratorium of multi-unit buildings in the town for a period of one year from today. Second. A uh, motion by Arthur and a second by Bill. Any questions or discussion? I just have Matthew. a comment to make. You all take a look around this room. There's symbols of the freedom, symbols of people protecting our freedom, which we all enjoy today. However, that does not give businesses the right to take advantage just because of the letter of the law. Hey. Yeah. Any other comments by the board? Hearing none, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor of Arthur's motion, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, I deem it unanimous. Motion so with to close the public hearing. Motion to close the public hearing. Second. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. 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 Move to adjourn. We have a motion to adjourn. Is there a second? All those in favor? Aye. Yeah, but no one mentioned about all the friends.
friends and their friends that are both in the development as well. So that's just good. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Yeah.